today we're going to come on to give you the strategies for dealing with sin because let me tell you the bible calls it a device the bible says we are not ignorant of the devil's devices and if it is a device it's about time that we start fighting back against this device because the devil often wins let me tell you how often he wins he wins because all of us have sinned yes. yeah so he has won at least one wrongs with you but you can't have him winning all the wrongs you can't have him allowing us to always be subject to him so it's about time that we fight back now the bible says in galatians chapter 5 and verse 1 talking about the law and it says stand fast therefore in the freedom wherewith we have christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage galatians 5 and verse 1. let me explain how how, how, how that works sin wraps us around like a snake have you seen how a snake some snakes would capture its prey it would wrap it around and would suffocate it squeeze it that it cannot breathe and just wait for it to lose its life yep yeah. and then swallow you whole now when you really look at sin in that context sin is a very dangerous thing because while it is wrapping us around sometimes the animal may think i can break free but you see the snake and the muscles of the snake is stronger than it looks the snake is a subtle animal subtle and 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 it, it, it sneaks up on us you don't hear a snake coming in yeah it, it's sensible every time you inhale it squeezes because you got drunk that's right that's right so as soon as you take a breath right and what you're going to do is make sure that you can't be the, the second one and as soon as you take a next one it squeezes further and further yeah so that's what sin does now snakes I don't ever oh I hear a snake walking outside go and see who is there <laughs> <laughs> you see snakes and that's why the bible said they are subtle subtle and, and they would just appear you don't even know that sin is at your door you don't even know that something that you are going to do wrong sometimes it's just around the corner and that's how the devil allows things to sneak upon us so i want to use some examples today the lessons i learned from Macau. <laughs> Some of you may know that I see about animals, so I see about some sheep, goats, and cows. Um, so let's assume cow is the world. Let's assume the cow is sin. So the, when I look at that, I, and the reason is that this week I was seeing about the animals, and I got some experiences with the cow, and um, I started to tell myself, you know what, this is so much like sin and so much like the world. So I said, let me bring the lesson on it. I went and the cow was entangled. It was tangled up with the goat, it was tangled up with shrubs and all sort of things. It was one of the worst things. Even my wife thought I went to town. She did not realize I was still in the bush. <laughs> It was just one miserable awesome. Yeah. So they call it their tangle. So sometimes sin starts to control us and we how to do we deal when we're starting to lose control. Because we are not even aware that we are beginning to lose control of our lives. Let me tell you that sometimes one time you are good as ever, and before you know it. You get yourself wrapped up in some attitudes, things, sin, wrong people that you did not even know how deep you are in till it is too late. That's how sin is so, so, so sneaky. So I've learned this lesson from the cow. You see, when my cow take off running, I have that rope in the hand. I'm not trying to pull back that cow. <laughs> I have learned and bright enough. You see, I used to. 
And then, because I told him, of course, I could, I could stop the cow from running. I just had to pull the rope. But you know, there was one time the rope, the cow was just running. I pulled the rope. The cow did not even jolt. I, as though it did not even know I pulled the rope. And if I did not let go, it would have dragged me into some shrubs. So I've learned, once you see that cow start on a gallop, head for a tree stronger than me. And run around the tree with the rope. Why? Because I am not able to come up against a cow. People find themselves in some difficult situations in life. And they try to handle it on their own. The world is alluring. The world has so many things that tempt us. And sometimes when we recognize that the world is beginning to drag us, get in touch with somebody who's stronger than you are. Don't hang around people who are weaker than you are. If I run around one of those little shrubs and say, cow running, and I hang it, what do you think is going to happen? Me and the shrub come in with the, go with, with, with the cow. And a lot of people, when you see them stop coming out to worship, they are going through some troubles. And they, instead of getting closer to people who may be stronger than them, they drift further and further away. And that's what the devil wants. You see? Because the devil, as somebody says, cannot control you, but he wants to distract you. It's that distraction that works. You see? So that's why we have got to always be on top of things with the devil. Yes? Um, three weeks ago, I felt excruciating pain for the first time in my life. And I said, God, why you now? You made two children and you have felt excruciating yeah. pain only three weeks ago. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this pain was crippling. Yeah. I could not lift my leg. I could not even get to the bathroom to pee on time. So because as I get, got up to go, it was so painful that I had to walk slow. So I couldn't make it. And I told my husband I was ready to die. And he was like, Michelle, you're too wicked to dead now. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, you're supposed to feel sorry for me. I tell you that I want to die. You know, and I, I call a sister, I call a, <laughs> I, I call a sister and I said, I think I'm ready to die because I'm in the hospital sitting down here. And I said, I think I'm ready to die. And this sister told me, you think it's so easy people that's dead? Yeah. And everybody I talking to, they didn't even feel sorry for me. They just made me laugh and gave me so much strength. Mm -hmm. So within the past month, the sisters and the brothers I've spoken to, spoken to, they only gave me strength. They did not even feel sorry and say, okay, well, I know we're going through, I'm going to pray for you. I mean, it was just jokes. And I am telling people I am ready to die. Mm -hmm. And they're like, girl, you ain't going to die. No, you're going to live. And like, that is, so, that I felt so much strength from that. Right. And that is what we are saying. That sometimes our emotion drag us away from God. And where we need to be able to always have your eye on somebody in the Lord who's stronger than you are. Yes. You see? And, and so we need to be able to learn to be close to other people. The, everybody in the church can't be weaker than you. Yes, sir? Now, they may not be stronger than you in every area, but in a particular area, they may be stronger than you. So they may not be tempted in this area, or they may not have a, a, a weakness or a flaw in this area, but in another area. There's nobody in the church that is every area they are weaker than you are. There are many people in the church right now that in many situations they are stronger than I am. And believe that. Just eye that person and keep close to that person so that when the world and sin and frustration and depression start to drag you away, run and wrap yourself around that person. So that you can gain strength from the person. The thing is, we stay away hoping that we will recover. We will not recover. You see? So, 
Any other question or comment on that? Yeah, it's like a wounded animal. When an animal is wounded, it takes off by itself and hides away in some lair, you know, yes. in some cave or something until it can recover or die. Right. I, and here's also something about an injured animal. It is in so much pain that even people who come in to help the animal, yes. it is going to attack. Yes. Yeah? And sometimes a brethren go through some rough points in their life. People go through some rough points in their life. They can no longer recognize who are their allies. They consider everybody an enemy. So if somebody wants to genuinely help them, and they ask, they are, as though they are attacking the person, uh, and don't want help, and they, they, they start to tell them themselves, leave me alone, I got to see by myself, I'm all right. You see? So that is what happens whenever you're wounded. But I've noticed that that is a natural defense mechanism of the body, you know? Mm -hmm. Your brain takes over and figure that everybody else is enemy. Yes. I actually had that experience once. I had a, um, a worker in, in the department, and anytime her blood sugar dropped exceedingly low, she would just behave as if everybody trying to mm -hmm. do her bad. Yes. It's one day I put her sit down very sternly. Mm -hmm. and spoke to her and after that we were able to control her during that episode yes. such that she didn't have to end up going rushing off to the hospital anymore so it's a, a mechanism of the brain that your brain takes over and figure I could handle it on my own which remember now we're talking about during the sermon I said we're going to talk about fix your attitude right so 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 that's the, the topic so I, I, I don't want to go into the, it yet, but as you mentioned about that, negative is a natural attitude. Once you don't have positive. Yeah? As long as you get rid of the positive thought, negative is naturally. You don't have to work on getting negative there. If you take off your light in the night, you don't have to go and search for darkness. Darkness naturally will come. Yeah? Yeah. So that's why we have to be careful how we operate during the time when we are going through our weakest moments in life. Try and make sure that you tell yourself, I should not do that which seems natural. Because it might be because I'm allowing myself to naturally become negative. Here's what we do naturally whenever we feel down. The colors of our clothes change. The color that you look in your wardrobe to take out, many times you try to choose a dull color. The other thing that you do is that you tend to know, you could tell a man in a good mood today. <laughs> yeah. Um, you avoid people because you want isolation. I want, I want my moping time. And then in that moping time, what we do is that we replay all the things that are not going right in our lives. And as we replay all the things that are not going right in our lives, we feel more and more depressed. And as we feel more and more depressed, we now don't want to see nobody else in our lives again. And as we don't have anybody else in our lives, because no other input comes to change that. We are in our own zone reproducing, marinating, meditating, and stirring all the negative things in our life. And if you stay there long enough, depression is going to hit. Yeah, you have your own built-in pity party. And here's what the next thing we're going to do. We need to find somebody to join this party. Guess who you will find? Somebody else who has a problem. You're not going to find somebody You're not going to find somebody who is on a higher beat than you. Whatever it is you're complaining about, you are going to find somebody who's complaining with something similar or has another complaint. So that we could see, boy, you know, did what this man do me? What do Sukdio do me? Sukdio, boy, I, I sell Sukdio this and Sukdio. 
try it out to pull a fast one. Hey, you know, like, and we, he do me that too, you know. And we join in and we have a nice party. And so I feel justified in my sadness. Yes, and we never solve anything. All we have done, we have together hated him. I overheard a conversation. I wasn't even dropping. I overheard a conversation right. of a man expressing, they were sitting at the back of me, and he's expressing about a member of his church. Um, and they are talking and he's saying that, you know, people need to be honest and people need to be God-fearing and so on. And, and the person say, yes, yes, yes. And the person go, go to get up because they realize this is going on a negative way. No, I ain't done talk to you, sit down. <laughs> and they put the person sit down back and so on. And they start to call the name of the person and what the person did and I'm not going to leave that so. And they went down the road and so on. Yeah, 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 yeah brother, but don't, 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 don't take that on. And the person get up to leave again. No, no. The person said, no, I need to go and get something done. I'm not going to keep you long. And they put the person sit down back again. And that went on for a considerable period of time with the person offloading about how unrighteous this person is. Why they unrighteously bad talk the person. Yeah? And they, I'm sure the person probably felt, I'm doing a good. But that can't be a good. What you're doing? He's trying to get her to join him in this issue. And what, one of the things I recognize about the lady, she refused to join him. He was much older than she was, so she respectfully listened. She tried every time to, 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 to get away, but you see? And um, eventually when she done, she said, well, you know, we'll try and pray for the brother, and so on, and she left. You see, but that, and that is how he it does not even recognize how he has been entangled, how that seep him into a situation and a mindset and a thinking. So always get into a situation with somebody who's stronger than you are. Hear what Psalm one one says: Great blessings belong to those who listen, who would, don't listen to evil advice. Your King James would say. Um, Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. The traditional. I'm using the easy to read version. Great blessings belong to those who don't listen to evil advice. Who don't like, live like sinners. Who don't join those who have fun of God. Who make fun of God. Uh, and he says, don't, don't go that route. In other words, find somebody stronger than that. Yeah? Don't allow yourself to sit down and talk with people who have issues, who have problems, and so on. When you have problems, don't talk to somebody with problems. When you don't have your problem, talk to somebody with problems in order to help them. But if you don't, it is going to melt you down. So... The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. That is way. Your own understanding is like a shrub. Me trying to tie the cow around the shrub. Right. But don't lean on your own understanding. With all your ways, acknowledge him. Tie it around God. And he will direct your path. He's going to be strong enough. And Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come to me all you that weary and burden, and I will give you rest. God is strong. So for those who just entered, we're talking about strategies to overcome sin. Strategies to overcome sin. This whole month we're talking about sin, understanding sin. So those strategies to overcome sin, try and hold on to God. Sometimes we become discouraged, but do not let that discouragement take you. Right. Another lesson that I learned from these calls. Don't let the world or sin drag you away. Sometimes you just have to let go. You see, because sometimes when the cow takes off running, I'm not near a tree. Yeah? So I can't run around a tree to be able to stop it. So what do you think I do? Let it go. You see, because if I don't let it go, that cow, regardless of how much I invest in the cow, regardless of me and the cow close, it will kill me. Right? So there are some things and some, some things and some people in life 
We need to learn to let go. Because they will kill us. <laughs> of course. Sister Michelle, not including your husband. <laughs> it is difficult when the time comes to let go, to actually let go. Because you're holding on because they tell yourself, I don't want the cow to get away. Look how much money I spend on the cow. Look how much money I will lose if this cow go and I can't find it back. And you're holding on. But the strength of the cow is not going to be worth your worthwhile to hold on to it. There some, let me tell you, the devil is not an easy thing. Don't, don't, don't try to come up against the devil. The devil is powerful. And he's going to lick you up. Don't try to hold on to something. Don't try to, there are some things of the world that we like that are strong in our lives. And everybody have their own things that they have their weakness for in this life. Whatever that weakness is, as long as it is dragging you away from God, as long as it is dragging you away from the church, brethren, let it go. It is not worth it. When you look at your life years later, you are going to regret it. That's how life is. So therefore, don't let the world drag you away. Let go of some stuff. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12 verse 2, don't change yourselves to be like the people of the world. Because we, instead of we impact the world, the world is impacting us. We becoming very close like the world. We dressing like the world. When we get vexed, we talk and behave wajang like the world. Uh, we treat each other like the world. Whenever we, we fall out with each other, we, we, we operate with each other like the world. I said, don't change yourself to be like the people of the world, but let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You will be able to know what is good and pleasing to God and what is perfect. Let go of some stuff. What is it you need to let go? Every one of us has something in our lives that's weighing us down, keeping us back, dragging us. What do we need to let go? What are those things that are a stumbling block in our lives? And here's what. Who are those people that no longer should be on our journey with us? You see, because there are some people in our lives could take us so far and after that they cannot take us any further we should not enter into the next phase of our, of our lives with the, some people that were not able to come this far hello you with me you and all of us would meet different people in our lives that is the beauty about life we all will meet different types of people in our lives those people that we meet in our lives have certain capacity and no more so if you are it, it is almost like a taxi i took a taxi some time ago i think it was i can probably in trinidad or somewhere i took a taxi i thought the taxi goes the full distance to where i'm going meeting at I just know this is the taxi stand going in that direction. Halfway on the journey, the taxi driver stops. Everybody else gets out except me because I'm the only one who did not know this. So I sit in down. The gentleman says, so you need to get out here. I said, but this is not where I'm going. He said, this is as far as I am going. So I said, well, then why didn't you tell me that when you picked me up? I said, this is where I usually go. So I had to pay him and jump out. But I could take another taxi that is capable of taking me from where he left me off to take me to where I'm going. Regardless of what it is, he's not going further than this. And that reminds me of some friends. That reminds me of some family members. Say amen. amen. 
There are some people who can only go with us on this journey so far and no further. Don't attempt to lasso them and drag them into your next phase of life because they will be like the cow. They are going to drag you in their own direction. There are some people that have come out of our lives that we should allow them 